Noisy miners are the best known Australian native honey eaters. They live in sedentary colonies of up to several hundred birds. They noisily defend their patch of trees from other birds, especially other species of honey eaters, which may be seen as competitors for the food resources. And these are vigorously chased away. This has become a problem, especially for the smaller threatened woodland birds and noisy miners are now classified as a key threatening process. But more on that later. My name is Kim and I have been a wildlife rehabilitator for the last 15 years. Let's take a look at the fascinating bird behaviour and how this helps us when reuniting noisy minor chicks. Nesting is from June to December in small to large colonies and several broods may be reared during a single season. The nest is positioned high in the tree, usually on the end of a branch for safety. The female constructs the nest and incubates the eggs alone, but both sexes will care and feed the young birds. Egg incubation is 15 to 16 days, chicks fledge in about 16 days and are fed by the flock for a further five weeks. Noisy miners are cooperative breeders, a system quite rare for birds, with additional helpers that feed the young. Interestingly, research shows these helpers are almost always male. This is because more males are needed as helpers for feeding chicks. This behaviour and the aggressive and sedentary nature makes noisy miners very easy to reunite with their flock. Many chicks come into care after their maiden flight or are blown out of the nest in inclement weather. These can be quickly reunited. I rescued a chick from a suburban block of units after a storm. See the marked yellow cross. She was uninjured, healthy and begging for food but was not flying very well due to her age and development. I kept her under observation for a couple of days just to rule out any infections or unseen injuries and then my first attempt at reuniting failed. So I took her home for another week and made sure she practiced flying to build up some muscle fitness and strength. The second attempt I went to a neighbouring block which had a more natural landscape, had native trees, shrubs and grass. The flock were also there in the eucalypt trees that bordered the two properties. On reflection, this was a better location. It's a good idea to Google Earth your location and have a good look at the surrounding environment before you go. Make sure your chick is hungry and calling and this will attract the adults. Place the rescue basket on the ground, first with the lid on and make sure the adults can pass any food through the top of the basket. Step back and wait to see if any birds are attracted to the chick's begging calls and start to feed them. If there is any aggression, they will not accept the chick and it will need to be raised in care. I wait to see if the bird is being fed and by how many birds. When this is successful, I either wait and see if the chick will fly up to a branch or place the chick on a lower section of the tree. But this little chick flew up to the branch. On a branch, noisy minor chicks will make their way up high in the tree for safety. If the adults continue to feed the chick, I am confident that the chick will be cared for by the flock. I ask the rescuing member of public to look out for the chick and let me know if there are any other issues. If the release site is close to you, you can visit the site to check on the chick. If the chick is attacked by the flock or the flock show no interest in the chick, they should be raised in care and released in a large flock. So in summary, the chick must be fit and healthy. Check for the exact rescue location. Noisy miners are sedentary. Place the basket with the chick on the ground and move away. Observe adults feeding the chick and place the chick in the tree. There has been lots of discussion about noisy minor aggression and it's such a problem for many species of woodland birds already threatened by habitat loss that noisy minor aggression is now listed as a key threatening process under Australian environmental law. According to the Threatened Species Recovery Hub's National Science Program, the effects of culling noisy miners is not effective as neighbouring flocks move in to fill the gap. Researchers suggest restoring the understory vegetation that is important to so many bird species and calls for more investigation as a potential solution. But this takes time and plants need to be carefully selected to not encourage aggressive honey eaters.